Okay. Uh, for, for All right. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, July 20th Town Council Appointment and Negotiation Committee meeting. I am your chair, Karen Troop, and we have full attendance here with Councillor Hamerl and Councillor Cucci. Uh, first, we will open this up for public comment to see if anyone has any comments for anything that is on the agenda this evening. No one in attendance. I do not see anyone online. We'll let that be. I'll close public comment. Item four is we have the approval of the minutes from the June 14th, 2023 meeting. Did everyone get a chance to review those? Yes. Any questions or concerns? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Item number five, I'm gonna make a motion to amend the agenda at this time and remove discussion item number one, which is review applications. And that is a motion, do I have a second? Yeah, I can second that. Yep, and then a discussion. But yeah, I, I, well, I, I think that we weren't prepared to focus this today. It's been, it's Yep. No, and I apologize. I was out last week and it was not brought to my attention that there was an opening on long range planning. This is a big position. I would like to take the time to look at the applications. I think we have a couple of good ones. Um, so I apologize for that. Point of doubt. Yeah. Um, Enjoy another month of summer. <laughs> yeah. Of summer, whoever gets done. Um, all in favor? Yes. Thanks. Okay, second on the agenda here is discussion on the market data. And this is in regards to Tom's employment agreement negotiations. This afternoon, <clears throat> Leanne provided us with, I think some up-to-date updated numbers with a little more information. Um, I don't know if anyone's got a chance to review. He gave us local government management manager survey. <clears throat> and then we also got a breakdown of Tom's employment agreement compensation throughout the years from the beginning to present. And then what is this third one? It says Bitterford Town Manager Survey. This was the one that Tom just dropped off. Okay. So this is one that Bitterford Town Manager did and similar oh, over to Liam's. Perfect. And it had a few oh, things, okay. a few additional towns that we didn't, didn't have, have on ours. So All right. that's more data. Uh, one thing I would say, this is it's just sort of, it's a, it's a little bit raw. I mean, we don't really have averages or medians i mean you haven't really done that work on this so we have uh, i haven't done a lot of analysis on it uh, i've eyeballed it and, and john's you know more astute uh data cruncher and you know quantitative guy than i am but um you know i think in general when we looked at this tom is you know in a pretty good place in terms of his base salary but we have some other yeah we'll have to look at the total package because they these things don't align exactly across towns. You know, some people have car policies, other people right. don't. So Le the question, what's ICMA? Uh, that's a good Slash question. RC. Uh, Which one are you looking at? Uh, retirement. It's retirement. Why, uh, you know it's, I don't know what the acronym is. So, and that was when I spoke to Liam. He said that the two. Oh, um, city managers. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. The Associated retirement yeah. plan. Association for plan. Yeah. yeah. Liam, Liam was saying, well, typically the biggest things we want to look at is the base salary and the retirement. He said yeah. those are usually the biggest comparisons. He said sometimes there's a little underreporting for like some of the benefits, like cars and things like that. So it's right. kind of hard to gauge. Um, but I think when we're looking at the, the best things to compare, it would be the salary and then what they're getting for retirement. And then we know yeah. that Tom has that different bonus structure that is not common for other managers. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'd like to propose is rather than doing this real time, I'd, I'd suggest we take a cut of the data and try to get some, you know, ranges, means, and medians, you know, on, on the base salary, also total cash cost, and then try to try to do the same thing if we can normalize it with some of the retirement benefits. Most of these are a percentage of base salary, um, and you can see some people participate in just one of those plans, other people participate in both of them. So it's, uh, and the vehicles, so let's see, you only have one, two, you only have two towns that provide vehicles, but most of the others are an allowance. We might be able to try to relate some of this though. So you've yeah. got a couple of, of, of indicators or factors, right? The, the population size, yeah. how, much, how many years of experience they might have. Yeah. yeah. 
Those are really so then, and then you have to decide which one. You know, are there any in here that are anomalies? Well, and that was one of the, I want to say it's one of the things that you know Liam pointed out was that in the last couple of years, some some of these towns have brought in maybe out of state or people, and suddenly they've had a bump in what they were paying. Sanford seems to be a bump. Um, I can't remember what town he said, but yes, kind of bunker. Probably Kenny Bunk and Sanford. Those are the ones. Those are in the better for them. Um, York. Uh, York's pretty high too, and they've only been there a year. Maybe it was York, but. If that was just maybe if there are some enough, some odd numbers, it might be that. I don't know if anything jumps out at anyone right now, per se, on all this stuff. It's a lot of numbers and a lot of different factors to consider. I want a chart, John. <laughs> yeah. I mean, eyeballing the yeah. total compensation, which isn't. I guess a true column because some of these don't don't contribute to that, like uh, Kennebunk, Port Saco, and York. I think because they're missing retirement info. Um, but just eyeballing that, it, it, I see more higher than where Tom is right now than, than lower. Right. What about if we factor in the like the yearly bonus? Well, that and that's then, why I'm looking at the total column um, that does factor that in. And so that would be in there. So it's a bunch of number crunching things. I do a little bit of for work. I mean, time off, uh, vacation, sick days, holidays look right, pretty consistent. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's Liam like said is it's all week. pretty standard and similar. When it has like this, the ICMA, that's the retirement. Then is the 25%, like when I'm looking at the first one, it says Auburn, it says 25%. Is that they're contributing 25% of his salary towards his retirement? Yeah, I think yeah. that, would, uh, uh, but that would be on total earnings, not just base comp, I think. Do you think, John, or not? I don't know. I can't do that math in my head, but the base salary is 146 and the, uh, the contribution is 36. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That's but, but, but my the question is the twenty five percent would be the percent contribution of it probably would be total total cash comp I'm assuming but it would depend upon what the rules are for the for the retirement plan. Right. Uh, I don't know offhand whether it's just base or total cash comp. Those numbers are kind of so it there. is off the base salary. The twenty five percent, as reported here, the, that thirty six. The thirty six. Yeah. Thirty six is twenty five percent. I see. Okay. I see. So you see, like Auburn and then Cumberland, all at the bottom, they have right. lower salaries, but then they have a higher retirement percentage. Right. Right. Towns in that market as well. Yeah. Eighteen percent is higher than the most. Than most. But so this would be though a retirement contribution, uh, and I don't know whether these are. Main PERS, I think, is a DB plan. ICMA RC percent, I don't know what that is, whether that's a defined benefit or a, a uh, defined contribution plan. Um, I did, right. So that would be, and then just these are questions that Liam would have. You yeah. know, so a lot of other communities, issue. in addition, so in addition right. to that 25%, he gets 5% yeah. from main PERS. Yeah. That's why I was trying to compare the total yeah. column. Right. Okay. And then when we have the total, what's this? So what's the total at the end here? Is that we're adding up all the to the extent it's reported? Salary, I think the ones that are blank, retirement. They couldn't do an apples to apples total. Yeah. So I think the total comp here on the bigger sheet is the local comp. This one that uh, the did is adding that up. Well, let's see. It's one forty-six plus. It's all it's all three of those, I think. Yeah. Base, uh, base salary. Base salary. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, I, mean, what, I think it's be a little hard for us to come up with a with conclusions. You know, kind of just seeing this for the first time. What the I propose? When did yeah? When did they? Get their so like better for just did a study as well because they're probably renewing the contract. Right. right. It's three years old, they're going to be at a different right. point than yeah, it's just a somebody who just 20, yeah, yeah, July 20th for the Biddeford numbers. Right. You see that on the upper left? Yeah. As of July here. 20. Yeah. 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 So I don't think we I'm assuming we got an as of data uh Liam's but yeah, I'm um, pretty sure this is like up-to-date stuff that Liam got. Right. But we don't know where they are in the contract. That's what you're saying. Which, yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. So the, the thing I think we should do though is to try to like do do some you know one pager of analysis in terms of saying what the the range, the mean, the median is for these these looking mainly at the cash comp, and we do the same thing with Tom. Try to get an idea of you know tenure and yeah years of service as a factor, mm -hmm. um, and then. I think ultimately we try to work up some sort of range, you know, what would be a reasonable adjustment, you know, assuming that we, you know, are renewing the contract and it'd be a three year agreement. I also don't know off the top of my head what we did last time, but we, you know, we can kind of say what, what the percentages were the last time Tom got an adjustment three years ago. But I, I can't remember off the top. I seem to recall we have this retirement contribution more so. Than yeah, that's right. Based on, yeah. That's not on this chart, is what you're saying? Um, that he gave us his last, it's probably on the next page. Uh, let's see, okay, here it is on, on the third page here. So, there's COLA increases each year, right? So, we increased his. So, this is your these are the five the contract contracts, five, said, one up right. two and a half percent initially. Right. Right, we gave him an extra percent yeah. on the last three-year contract for his retirement contribution, and we gave him a <clears throat> two and a half, one point eight to two point seven percent increase. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm assuming we may have used some indicator there in terms of uh, either a CTI or an ECI indicator, but I it looks like it. yeah. I don't know what that is. Uh, the ECI is the employment cost index, and the CPI is the cost, uh, uh, the CPI consumer price index. One measures inflation, the other measures sort of total employment costs, including public sector employees. Those are both Bureau of Labor Statistics reports, so we could get that from the last quarter they won, they update them quarterly. So we could dish that out. But you're right, John, we, we were. Uh, <clears throat> we made steady progress on his retirement contributions over the over the contracts. You know, it's interesting because you look at um, 2019. Yeah. His total comp was 174. Yeah. His total comp last year. It's the same number. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> they actually took pay cut the past three years. I'm not. I don't fully appreciate why that is. Uh. Well, one year was because the bonus, and, yeah. and he voluntarily right. waived that. But I wonder why. Well, we, we increased. Well, we, that's a good question. I don't. It does look pretty flat. And I don't think this does this reflect the ten thousand dollar bonus that we the performance bonus. Yeah. It does. It does. Yeah. So you can see those two years. He didn't get one. He waived one, I think, one year. Yeah, he waived those. During money. COVID. Right. How have you typically been calculating that bonus? Is it well, just it's bonus? A it was 10%. 10% right. of his uh, cash. Account. It's discretionary, but usually yeah. it's been right. It's been 10, 10, around $10,000. dollars I wonder if Don, you hit on it, where we changed the base of his retirement contribution. Yeah. That seems to we increased the percentage. Right. His salary went up. But yeah. The retirement contribution went down. I don't know how that was calculated. Change. I don't know. I don't With the new contract. Yeah. I don't recall how we did that. Yeah. 
I thought. I don't recall that we, so the total, I, I forget what we did, but we quoted something over the term of the contract and that was just broken down, broken down over each year. I don't recall. Because the percentage increase, um, let's see, this base salary percentage increase, it, you know, we have up and down and up, back up again. That's what's weird. I, I think we, yeah, we sh shifted some, we shifted more to the employer contribution to deferred comp rent in the first year of the three year agreement. Yeah, so 2020 to 2021. The numbers on this page don't line up with the numbers on the second page. No. The salary does, but the retirement contribution on the first page is 24,000. On the second page, it's the 22,000. Right. And the bonus amount's different as well. Hmm. Yeah. We, we, might, we might need to scrub the data a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, I think what we need to do is probably, rather than do this in committee, maybe it makes sense for John, you and I to take a turn at it with Liam just to kind of follow up and ask the questions, so identify and questions try to and draw it down yeah. and then maybe come back with a recommend, you know, what would be a recommendation potentially. Um, we haven't talked about, you know, any language changes to the agreement yet. And we don't have a date set mainly because of other, other priorities, but, you know, we expect to meet, you know, probably in the next 30 to 60 days. You know, well, we had set July. We're supposed to meet in what, three weeks? Is that our next? Pardon? We'll have our normal meeting next month, right? Right. right. Yeah. As a committee. As a, yeah, as as a committee. appointments committee. Yeah. yeah. So I, we could definitely meet with Liam between now and then. I uh, I, and then I, what I'd say is if we don't, so we can get sort of a ballpark figure in mind and then we can, Yeah. Uh, John and I had, had originally set a date of trying to have a first meeting with Tom in July, but it looks like it's gonna probably be early August and July, it's July 20th already, I, you know, because of the, the stuff we're doing uh, with the school, I think it'd be early August. So, but why don't, why don't we try to meet before the end of July, John and I with Liam and, you know, rough out, rough out something. Hopefully with this spreadsheet. Yeah. A lot of numbers. Yeah. I have, yeah, it's, it's a lot to take it in. There's a lot of different, yeah. you're trying to normalize things. Yeah. yeah. And it would be good, I think, um, we'll get an update on the, you know, on the CPI and the ACI numbers. And then that way we can get a range, we can get a ballpark so that when we have the first meeting or two in general, we'll have something at the ready. Mm -hmm. We would take everything forward from the committee, from our appointments committee to the council to get approval for that. In the final move. But last year, I, I well, three years ago, I think it was, uh, we finished negotiating in August. We had a couple of meetings, two or three meetings, nothing real serious. And then uh, we signed the thing in September. Okay. It expires in June. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not like yeah. we don't have time. Yeah. And, you know, and you know, Tom's aware of the, you know, We've talked about the base value, but okay. we're not expecting any any huge shifts on right. either side of this. Yeah, if you guys want to make the numbers make a little more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little uh, long. I, I, there's nothing jump out of jumping out at me that I like throw a town out or something. But, right. There's just so many different factors. But to understand it, yeah, like Brunswick looks low. I don't understand. I don't know why that was. Well, my bitter for Santa at one time. But there's probably factors that can explain that. Right. Yeah, I think you probably had recent hires. I mean, the last time we did this, the the outlier was I was near the top in terms of this cash comp. Um, but there's been a lot of changes since then. 
and the one person that was top of the top of the pack was Kenny Bunk, and then uh, it was Portsmouth was the highest. For some reason, they factored in Portsmouth and New Hampshire. Those those two were the highest. Right. Now it looks like Kenny Bunk South Portsmouth came up four. Oh no, Thomas. Well, and you've got a couple that are over the 200 mark range terms of yeah. total comp. Yeah. Wyndham. That's a surprise. Wyndham, South Portland, Sanford. But as you said, John, those are ones that kind of just probably just got filled. You on the and, paper sheet now? Yeah. yeah. I'm jumping around here. A bit of our town manager's sure right now. Yeah, I don't know, you know, what's most important. Is it total years they've been doing this or the size of the town or, you know, there's so many different to consider what well, yeah what i'd say is we probably ought to just include bitterford you know the updated bitterford numbers in here because you've got more towns and you've got new towns but you do that this is just needs another turn i think before we can do much analysis i think flagging other areas but That sounds good. So I'll take this as an action item. We'll follow up with Ann. I'll say we, we had a brief discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd like to try to combine the data and tighten it up. Better. Yep, get some bullet points to map it out and and, um, and then come back with, you know, try to rough out what would be a range, you know, or areas for us to consider in terms of making a recommendation. I don't know that we need to do a recommendation formally, you know, in public. We probably would do that okay. in an executive session, I think. But they're going to see the number anyway. It's going to be public. Yeah. Yeah. So. But it's honestly, it's probably more of a conversation between you know, John, you, and Tom than yeah. a public conversation. Yeah. I guess. But it would be good for us to frame it and have yeah, you know, have one major to say, sense. here's yeah. what we got. And uh, yeah. it will give John and I a starting point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That sounds good. Okay. So we'll do that. Like that. Okay. And I'll I'll get that done by the time we meet again. Okay, and then we'll we'll go. Okay. That sounds That's good. Um, so item six is set the agenda for next meeting, which will only be in a couple of weeks. And so that's we will include on the next agenda the long range planning opening. And then also I think I said there's an opening on the community services and rec advisory board. One of the thoughts I had had was we have a bunch of folks who were not appointed to the ad hoc community center committee that might be interested in applying to that. So maybe we could reach out to some of them, see if anyone's interested to apply to that. So we'll definitely have some applications and action to make for board appointments at the next meeting. And then we'll discuss the, the consolidated and updated data that you guys are gonna make, make look good and make a little more sense to us. <laughs> right. We'll understand it better. Yeah. Not be yeah. Changing it. Well, we got, like you said, we got some new towns here from Bitterford, which will at least add to the mix. Yeah. And see how they factor in. Sounds good. One, one administrative note I make is that the, I mean, normally the other thing that we do is have the agenda posted to the town calendar and it's not, it's not posted. So for this that, meeting? No. Well, that was probably an oversight on my part. It should have been. So I anyway, so that and I know folks use board we use board docs or or the calendar, but that that's uh, and you had sent the email, so I worked on the email, but I you know uh, took a glance at that before coming. I thought this was showing up on my calendar. No, I didn't I think I sometimes I just pull the one from the calendar. My, yeah, this my yeah. inbox gets a little crazy. Uh, wasn't posted, so anyway. But we'll do that. Yeah. Maybe we can get Allison Carrier to advertise the new services opening too. It's, it would be great again to try to get more people to apply. Or it's we have a slew of new applications. Yeah. To move on. Is there anything else? 
Okay. And then I can think of which project. Okay. Is there anything we need to do to get ready for the year end crunch? Remember, we were behind the eight ball last year trying to make a renewal appointments in a hurry. So, okay. No, I like that. So, you know, I know Tony had that great spreadsheet that had every board on it. And so, what you're saying is maybe we should get a jump on who's coming up. See who wants to renew or something along those lines. Renew. Yeah. So, then by the time September comes, we have an idea of if people want to renew, if they're interested, things like that. It would probably be good to get a hold of and on top of. That makes sense. It's my first full cycle through, but that, yeah, right. I just remember us trying to catch up. Yeah. Well, and if we, yeah, that would be a good idea. So what what would our uh, the target be for having that ready? You want to have that done? I would say like by by our meeting in September. I mean, what happens is you're going to do council. So no matter how much we are organized, you're going to have a meeting. We have a new appointment, so yeah. person and the chair, or vice chair, yeah. you know, and if they are new to the council, then that's there's a yeah, but I, I think we could, you could let the boards know, let the individual know, you know, you're up, yeah, you're up for thing. Do you want to renew? Because most people are on that three year, three yeah. time cycle, so yeah. it's not like they're going anywhere, yeah, and find out their preference. It's not a guarantee that it's not, yeah, no. But, uh -huh. But I mean, it's just something to do if you wanted to. So I mean, this last year we were we were normally it's February by the time that gets all sorted. So we were we were in not bad shape when we did it. I mean, we. But we they're open in December, and yeah. they should be renewed and updated and ready to rock come yeah. January. Right. And if I think even if I'm not the chair next year, I mean, whoever is will have a better. So the effective Stepping dates are, are from November or from January? No, it's January. Yeah, January. I believe they're all up in January, but I, I can't put my finger on why I think that. So I forget. Yeah, I forget. That's yeah. how it is. Maybe. Yeah. But it's not like I mean, it's it's not like the presidency where you know they have a date by which they transition. I think the point was they were the term to expire in right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's it is. Is. Uh, December thirty first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, calendar year. Yeah, well, I mean, like we just said, I mean, long range planning. They like get on if you have a functioning board and you want to stay on top of your membership and things like that. There's nothing wrong with keeping in the bridge of what's coming down the road, even if it's not us making the decisions on January. I really like that spreadsheet. The one with every board, one. every yeah. term. I was like, I thought that was, that was great. And I imagine it's a decent amount of work to put together. Yeah. We keep it ongoing. Right. You do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Well, that's a good suggestion to keep on our radar and keep moving along. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah, nothing else. All right. Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. All right. Thank you. That's got to be some record 29 minutes. <laughs> That's because there was a bunch.